were making Thursday things were making Thursday things were making Thursday yeah Shines. It's Michelle here, and it's things are making Thursday, things are making Thursday, things are making Thursday, yeah. Before we talk about things we're making Thursday, remember to hook that subscribe button, like, comment, leave some yarn in the comment section. Got it right. Probably because I just finished recording my video that comes out on Saturday. Today's Thursday. Well, Today's technically Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. You're watching this on Thursday. If you watch it the day it comes out. Um, so, Saturday. You gotta watch Saturday's video because it is reveal part two of three. I did reveal part one a week or two ago. Um, part two and then part three of three will be the final reveal for the mystery yarn challenge and what it is is a blanket which is why i'm talking about it today because this is the last day of february the day you're watching this today is the second to last today would normally be the last day of february today is shannon's last day of february just kidding shannon um because <laughs> february 29th doesn't exist right um anyway uh, today's actually my cousin's birthday and tomorrow is one of my daughter's friend's birthday and so her mom's like what 12 or something like that um, <laughs> so anyway it's blanket month and uh, the my thing I'm doing for the multi art through Mr. Year and challenge is my blanket it's my blanket that I started at the beginning of 2023 I have one more clue left so Saturday you go see the reveal of clue 11 and how that's coming along it is absolutely stunning and gorgeous if you haven't seen it so that's coming out on Saturday um so you can go see that then I'm not showing that here just talk about it but blankets guys okay I did frog the one that I was trying to do a knit sampler I was just way too stressed out by things not matching I don't know if I specifically like just bought a bunch of yarn that I knew for sure was the same length versus using some scraps that I think are the same size. Um, if that would make a difference, because I'm like, I think that's Karen Simply Soft, but it could be, you know, it could be Red Heart Soft, it could be, uh, I love this yarn something, I can't remember what, I, I, I can't, it's not I love this yarn. I can't remember what Hobby Lobby is called right now, but there's all, everybody has a version, not everybody, but there's like these versions of the soft yarns that are similar to Karen Simply Soft, um, which is a little bit, usually a little bit thinner than a four weight, but called a four weight and it's super soft and everything. I don't know for sure with my scraps if they are that. Apologize for the dog. Um, so I don't know if I did a sampler where I actually purchased yarn specifically for use for that or I have, I was just given some a bunch of red heart yarn that would make a cute baby blanket kind of thing 80s baby blanket you know oh hair baby blanket yarn like it's not baby blanket yarn, but it's the it's the light blue the yellow light yellow and the light peach that I associate with 80s baby blankets oh seriously people what got mm. so I did do a blanket though what this is is in my church one of the ladies is like hey this place is doing um they have it's a I think it's like a quilting company that well it was like quilters that turn charity work and so they have usually most of their projects are sewing based projects that you can do to help donate to um, their cause but they also have crochet kits which all the kit is literally, let me see, I've got one here. Um, it came like this. It has information, it's the company um, phone number and their address and 
Um, it's called Stitching Hearts Worldwide, and it's located in Pleasant Grove, Utah. And so you get this piece of fabric. It has been cut so that the edges are, the corners are rounded, and somebody's gone and put holes in it. I will talk about the holes in a minute. Anyway, um, and they use a tool that just like punches the holes as they rotate it around. And then the instructions, please crochet at least twice around the blanket with soft yarn. That's the kit, a uh, piece of fabric that has been prepared. I'm okay with that, I have plenty of soft yarns. Um, so since I'm holding this one up, let me tell you, I have, obviously will not get this done in time. This is my current tithing project because it is made for donation. Where'd my yarn go? We were talking about the Karen Simply Soft type scraps, so I have this navy blue color that is some of that soft yarn. Oh, dog. Dog, seriously. Who are you barking at? Can't even hear them. Um, he's so old. Anyway, so there in the thing there is um blue eyes, blue color, and I thought this navy would actually look really cute around the edge, and I have a lot of this. So that is the plan for that one. I did finish one though. I got um, a pink here, and it's just a plain pink fleece. And so um, I went around it, and I did single crochets around the edges where the holes are. And that was hard. My OCD was freaking out because sometimes the edges were here and sometimes they were here. Like there wasn't a consistent all the way spaced from the edge. That drove me crazy. I'm like, if you're gonna put them an inch down, fine. Put them an inch down the whole way around. If you're gonna put them a half an inch, fine. Put them a half an inch the whole way. I'm like seriously people, do a little bit of measuring and put them consistently from the edge. That's what I need, but that's not what happened. I dealt with it. I, I just did my best. Um, so I did the single crochets and I ran out of that yarn. Like I had a little tiny ball left, but it would not have gone around even once again. So what I did was a single crochet chain, single crochet chain in through these holes. And then I went around and, and did single crochets in the chain space and chained. And I had a, um, it's one of the soft shiny yarns, Karen Simply Soft type idea. Um, so I did that. And then I was like, I can't count these. I have no clue what the stitch count is around. So I'm like, I don't know what kind of pattern to do in this. It was driving me crazy. So what I did was again, in the chain spaces, I did single crochets, but then I did a pico stitch. And so I did single crochet, pico, chain one, single crochet, pico, chain one, around, and that is how I did my border. And I think it turned out very nice. So here's this side, and this is what it looks like on the back. Very pretty both sides. Only a true crocheter who knows how to read stitches could tell you which is the front. Like this technically is the front side. Um, there, I don't really feel like it has a right or wrong side per once you get it all done. So it's a rectangular shaped little blanket with a crocheted edge. So that's what I did and I'm counting it as a finished object where things were making Thursday. Yay! So um, before I move on to talk about anything else, let me remind you, there should be all kinds of information down below. Um, Jess J Hook something, right? She's so adorable. I love her. Oh, she's just so cute. Um, she and her husband did the song. Uh, because most of the song doesn't actually apply this year, I just take a little clip um, and put it in the beginning of my videos. It's just a choice I made. And then there's a Facebook group. Come be a part of the Facebook group. I'm in there. I'm not active, but I'm in there. 
and if I see the pictures, I will like them. So you can share pictures. You don't have to be a content creator to do things for Making Thursday. If you want to share your pictures on somebody's videos, there are plenty of us that would be happy to do that. I would love to stick yours on the end here. I may encourage my daughter to play along and make stuff and add in. We'll see. Um, I have some thoughts for that, actually. That she can use her craft and put some things on. Um, yeah, that's what I know. I came into the game pretty late. Started watching things we're making Thursday. Probably, I don't know, it was pretty late. I remember the first person I saw say, showing it was not too old to be crafty. Cecilia, um, we had done some yard exchanges and stuff and for the mystery yarn challenge. And I saw that she had made turkeys in Thanksgiving and I was like, what is this thing we're making Thursday? So I started watching, but because it was getting ready for Christmas time and I was well over my head in Christmas projects, I chose not to participate, but I started watching the videos and looking for the videos and learning about it and figuring it out and joining the Facebook group so I could start to get on it. And then it was like January, I'm starting. So I did do January, done February, and March is coming just around the corner. So March is for bags. Let's talk about my bag trauma for a minute because I don't know what to do and I would love some advice. I have it right here. This was supposed to be a bag. Gorgeous color work. Oh, it's upside down. Um, I will tell you right now, it's supposed to be a griffin. Gorgeous color work. I got this far. This is about a third through this black and yellow section of the picture. <sighs> I was gonna do the whole thing, seam up the side and the bottom, and it would have a bag. And I was like, oh, cool, March is that. I will finish it and give the boyfriend his Christmas present. It started in December. Boyfriend is no longer in the picture. Cheyenne and Caleb broke up. Um, he had talked about proposing on Valentine's Day. Cheyenne didn't feel right about it. We kind of put him off on proposing she knew that she needed to have a hard conversation with him had the hard conversation with him left it up to him to decide whether or not he wanted to work on the relationship and resolve some of the issues they were having with each other or break up so she is doing pretty well uh we've she's talked to a lot of people she has done something different this time than she's done in the past when she's had heartache. In the past, she withdrew inside and cut off from the world. She is now aware that she really needs people. She needs connection in order to stay healthy. So she has hung out with friends. She has a party that she's doing this weekend. It's a breakup party. Um, she has some people other people that are hanging out with her Friday. So she's immersing herself with hanging out with some people, um, a chance to process, not avoiding the emotions, but a, to help her keep connected and remember that there are still people that care about her. So that's what she's doing. I'm so proud of her. She's doing so amazing through this. And I know, oh my gosh, breakups, they're the worst. When you love a person and things come to an end, not nice. But now I'm like, what do I do with this bag? I don't want to finish it if it's not going to him. I don't want to work on it and give him a present if he's not actually a part. It's just, it's, it's a space. Or do I just put it off for a while, see if they actually have a friendship after this breakup, and then if they have a friendship, finish it and make it for him. I need some help guys. Do I do that? What do I do? I need the answers right away so I know if I start working on it again, maybe Monday, or if I start some of the other bag projects that are in my brain thinking, I want to make that bag. I want to make that bag. 
I would love some feedback for that, okay? So let me know what you guys are doing. Give me some feedback about that. Um, and remember to let your light shine through your creations, whether they be a simple border or a big project, whatever kind of creations they are. Remember to let your light shine, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! The things we're making